Multiband compression is probably my favorite tool that I have in the toolkit, and I prefer it to regular compression because it offers way more control over the element that I put it on, whether that's an individual sound, a group, or the master channel. Now in today's video, I'm going to specifically break down five key ways that I like to use multiband compression on vocals to achieve a much cleaner and more upfront vocal sound, and it allows me to do way more things effectively than if I were to use just a regular compressor, which is probably what a lot of people are doing today. So if you're someone that's unfamiliar with multiband compression or just looking for more tips to get a better vocal sound, this is going to be a great video for you. Are you ready? Let's go. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to break down the difference between multiband compression and plain old compression. And if you're already familiar with this, feel free to use the chapter markers below to skip ahead to the first tip. But I just wanted to break this down for the people that may not know. And the truth is they're very similar. They do essentially the same thing. They compress whatever sound you apply them to. So what is compression exactly? Compression reduces dynamic range. That means when you have a sound that is loud and quiet at different times, such as a vocal take where I'm yelling really loudly and then whispering really quietly, that's a difference in dynamics there. And what a compressor does is it reduces the difference in volume between these different moments. So basically what it does is if you have a sound that's too loud, and essentially passes the threshold that you set on your compressor, the compressor turns on and reduces it, almost like an automated volume fader to turn that excessively loud sound down. But in the process, what you always do with compression usually is you add gain. And when you add gain, what you're doing is you're increasing the volume of the quieter parts as well. And that is ultimately bridging the gap between the loud and the quiet and getting that compressed sound, that gluey sound that sometimes people refer to it as. Now, regular compression does this across the entire frequency spectrum. It doesn't matter what frequency it is. If it passes the threshold, it's getting reduced. And some frequencies affect compression more so than others. So low end frequencies, for example, they're very big and dense and they can trigger a compressor to work more aggressively. And that's why a lot of these compressors also have a built-in sidechain feature which allows you to roll off some of the lows so that way the low end isn't triggering the compressor aggressively. In a way, that's a form of multiband compression, but a much more simplified version of that. Now, multiband compression differs from plain old compression because what it allows you to do is it allows you to actually compress specific frequency bands uniquely. So you may want to affect just the low end or just the high end or maybe a bunch of different bands in a very unique way and specifically to address certain problems that come up in the mix. And that's what we're going to talk about in these next five tips coming up. Now, the first way I like to use multiband compression is to tame low end muddiness. And this includes things like proximity effect, excessive plosives and other stuff like that. Just too much low end information that's creating muddiness, congestion and an overall lack of clarity on a vocal. I got this song here and all the songs that I'm going to use are from the same artist. His name's Sorry. And this is working on me specifically. I'll leave a link down below for all the songs that I use here. Now, what I'm doing here is I have this multiband compressor specifically set on an individual vocal track, the verse. And I've set it up so the most it can lose is about minus 3 dB of volume whenever it passes the threshold. And you're going to see that even though it's set this way, it's not reacting that aggressively. Now again, the reason why I'm doing this is because there's some low end presence that's just a little bit too overbearing and I wanna just clean it up and smooth it out. But at the same time, you'll notice that I have a little bit of a boost on my output, I'm adding one dB of gain. And the reason why that's happening is because if you're just simply reducing stuff like this and you're not adding any volume back, you might find that it starts sounding thin, especially when it comes to low end frequencies because as much as they are responsible for muddiness, it's also responsible for the presence and the vibe of the track a lot of the times the warmth right you need those frequencies to have those you know vibes and feelings through the track as well so i'm adding one db of gain so that way we're not totally losing the life the presence the warmth of the vocal but at the same time we have this set up in a way where it's going to reduce this problematic frequency area just enough so that it sounds clearer and more you know present in a way and a little bit more high end, right? So let me bypass this first and I'll just play it and then put it in and then we'll talk about what's happening. Meditate, meditate. I feel like my soul is about to detonate. Gathering my thoughts, watch them accumulate. While I'm blocking out this world like a barricade. Uh, let me... 
right? So you can kind of see, like it's not a huge, huge deal here. There's some processing on this track as is. And usually when I'm using this Pro MB, I'm putting it after a certain amount of plugins. So I might put it after my compressors and my EQs because typically these plugins, you know, I'm doing certain things and then it's manipulating the frequency spectrum a little bit more. As an example, you know, if I put a, you know, optical compressor plug in like a CLA 2A on my vocal, I find that it's going to, you know, even things out a little bit, but at the same time, it might create a little bit more low end frequency information. It might color it that way a little bit. So I'm going to use the Pro MB shortly afterwards to essentially clean up some of the muddiness that that compressor is going to create. So if, if you want to hear just what I'm exactly removing, I'm going to solo this band. Check this out. Meditate, meditate. I feel like my soul is about to detonate. Predominantly that low end information between 30 and 600. So lows and low mids, right? And it's just, again, smoothing things over. And let's just see once again what it sounds like in context. If I play it, take it out and put it in. Check this out. So this will be without it. Meditate, meditate. I feel like my soul is about to detonate. Gathering my thoughts, watching them accumulate. While I'm blocking out this world like a barricade uh, Let me chill, give me time give me. Emotions find a ladder, let him climb I need better, I deserve it God broke me down for my good Yeah, I'm worth it, I pray to me it's, it's not reacting so aggressively at times And other, t other times it is Because sometimes, sorry here on this track His tonality goes a little bit lower And it's going to affect it a little bit more aggressively When he goes to that tonality Whereas when he's in a higher tonality it's a little bit different. Before I get into the next tip, I wanted to say if you're getting value out of this video so far, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Hit that bell notification and leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think so far. If you want to see anything in the future, I'd love to help you in my future videos. I drop something new every single week, always focused on helping you sound better and helping you make more money with your music, whether it's through recording, mixing, and mastering, or talking about marketing advice and grant writing and ways to fund your music career. I have a whole bunch of content for you, and I'd love for you to check out the rest of my videos once you're done watching this one. All right, let's get back into this though and talk about the next tip. Another way that I like to use multiband compression on vocals is to tame harshness. I got the same song here, and this is actually the Pro MB that's on the overall acapella group, so all the vocals are going to this Pro MB. And as you can see, I'm doing what I just told you again here on the low end, but we're not going to focus on that because harshness isn't present in the low end, it's actually more present in the higher end. And as you can see here, I got between 4,000 and about 15,000 cordoned off here, and I'm doing a slight maneuver here where I am reducing this by about 1.5 dB. And if I just make this a little bit more aggressive, you can see here, 1.5 dB. The threshold set so that this is going to react, but I am adding a little bit of volume back. Now let's just sort of play this, and I'm going to solo this area so you can hear exactly what frequencies we're affecting. So it's not the worst it could be, but there's definitely some harsh frequencies there. And there's a lot of tools out there that you can use, but maybe all you have is a multiband compressor. And it's a really effective tool to use to address this. So as you can see, this is ultimately taking care of that area. I'm still adding some volume so that I still don't lose that presence. Once again, very similar to a normal compressor, whatever I'm affecting, I'm going to reintroduce volume or gain to compensate for that loss. But ultimately, it's just handling that problematic frequency range. So let me just play this again in context and I'll bypass this specific band and let's just see, does the vocal become more harsh, you know, more overwhelming in a sense, maybe more piercing on the ears when it's gone? And if so, when I put it in, does it become smoother? That's ultimately the goal here, but let's just see. Here we go. I'll take it out and I'll put it in halfway through. Meditate, meditate. I feel like my soul is about to detonate. Gathering my thoughts, watching them accumulate. While I'm blocking out this world like a barricade, uh, let me chill, give me time, give me emotions, find a ladder, let him climb. I need better, I deserve it. God will be down for my good, yeah, I'm worth it, upgrading me forever. Cold mind, but my heart stay warm like a sweater where I'm going. It's just more consistent overall, right? Like those frequency areas, they're not totally killing it when they're, you know, when this is bypassed. But ultimately what I'm doing here is I'm smoothing that area out. I'm preventing it from becoming too excessive and harsh on the ears because human ears are a little more sensitive in this frequency range. But I'm doing it at the same time. 
I'm not killing it. Like I'm not re removing too much. I'm also adding some stuff back to make sure that the presence is still there. But whenever this frequency range becomes too excessive, it, you know, drops down. But when it's not too excessive, it's getting a nice little boost and therefore it's sitting a little bit better in the mix. Now, the third way I like to use multiband compression in a mix is to use it to add presence. Now, here's another song. It's called Denial from the same artist, same album. And on this outro vocal, I wanted to essentially enhance the presence of it, but also without jacking it up in the sense of making it too harsh, brittle, and hard on the ears, sort of tying into that last point. So ultimately, what I like to think about is, I kind of mentioned this before, but the human ear is definitely more sensitive to higher frequencies. And it's sort of known that around 3000 Hertz, if you want to increase the intelligibility or the presence of a vocal, you want to boost around that area and it'll just sort of help. So obviously you could take an EQ and do that, but an EQ, unless you're using it in a dynamic mode, it's going to be a static movement. And that might be problematic at times, especially when the vocal maybe becomes excessive in that area, depending on the key you know, tonality change, things of that nature. So I'm using the Pro MB here to essentially accentuate around that area, in this case, uh, 4200 hertz, right? 4.2 kilohertz. And I'm only adding about a one dB boost, so a very slight boost on this individual vocal track. But then I also have my range and everything set up to reduce it as well. So just in case that it becomes too excessive, because this area could be very easy to overwhelm, um, you know, it's going to kind of clamp down and tame those excessive parts. But overall, we're trying to do this to increase the presence of the vocal here. All right. And I specifically have between 2000 and 9000 hertz sort of sectioned off. It's a pretty wide band. You could narrow it down and maybe have it between, you know, 2000 and 4000 as an example. So you're right on that 3000 sweet spot. But this seemed to be the trick for me. So let's check this out. I'm going to play this and we'll take a listen. Here we go. I'm not in my feelings. I'm not in my feelings. No, I'm not in my feelings. I play it go. So remember, it's 1 dB, so it's not intended to be this crazy massive move, but it is certainly noticeable enough. Like I definitely notice when it's in, there's a little bit more presence that we're getting from the vocal. When it's out, not as much presence is there, right? So this is just a real cool way to increase that presence by adding some volume with the output, but ultimately, you know, compressing it a little bit at the same time. So that way, when it becomes too excessive, when maybe there's too much energy in this potentially harsh frequency range, it doesn't overwhelm the listener, it doesn't overwhelm the mix. It's controlled, but overall it's clean and also has the presence that we want from it. Now, the fourth way I like to use multiband compression in a mix is to add air. I got this vocal here. This is on the individual vocal track on the same song, Denial, and... I've essentially used a multiband compressor to do a high end boost. Okay. So a high frequency boost is happening. I'm adding about two dB of gain from about 8.9 kilohertz and above. All right. But I also have this set up similar to these pass notes to create some compression, some volume reduction, whenever this frequency range becomes too problematic. So as an example, certain phrases, certain words, they have a lot more high frequency content, things such as F's words that start with the letter F you know, they could kind of peak in this area. And if you're adding air just with an EQ, which I also have done in the past, as an example, I'm replacing a mag EQ here, which is adding 15K, almost 2 dB. You know, sometimes that would create some problems. I've bypassed that EQ now though, and I've set this up instead. And I think I'm achieving a little bit more of a smoother result um, in the process. So check this out. I'm gonna play this, I'll bypass it and put it in. And you can just see that it's gonna increase the air, the presence, of the vocal a little bit, the high end presence, I should say, but at the same time, tame it whenever there becomes, you know, certain problems, right? These F words and, you know, sibilance, other words that maybe have a lot more high frequency content. So check this out. I'm kinda played this back about a million times. I'm over it, but I like reminders. I mean, just because my dad left doesn't make me upset. Pretty sure he had a good reason. Three kids for a lot, man. But 
I mean? Maybe I am the problem Maybe I'm the reason for the life I live Maybe it's my fault when my ex did what she did Cause I'm not worth it Great, maybe Let's kind of focus on this area Cause there's a lot of, you know, S's and X's And other sibilant related sort of words there So check this out I'll bypass, let it loop and put it back in for the life I live, maybe it's my fault when my ex did what she did, cause I'm not worth it. For the life I live, maybe it's my fault when my ex did what she did, cause I'm not worth it. For the life I live. You know, you can kind of tell there's still some stuff poking out a little bit, which may require some additional treatment. But overall, you can kind of hear how it's smoothening things out. It's still increasing the high end presence and the energy there, but without again creating this harshness or you know overbearing presence of the high frequencies that may affect the entire mix negatively. Now, the final way that I like to use a multiband compressor is to use it as a de-esser. So, of course, you can use an actual de-esser to do this job, but sometimes it's not as visual, it's not as intuitive as you'd like. And the multiband compressors, they usually have, you know, a spectrum analyzer, and it's usually a lot easier to just dial in settings, in my opinion. So, I'll often go to them or maybe a dynamic EQ before I'm going to a de-esser. I'm definitely still using de-essers, by the way, but sometimes this approach is just easier. Now I have this set up on an individual vocal track and you can see I've got about 4,000 hertz to 17, almost 18,000 hertz sectioned off. I got a 1 dB range, so the you know compressor is gonna essentially reduce this by up to 1 dB once it passes the threshold. And ultimately it's really gonna be clamping down, you'll notice on the S's. I've got a very broad curve as you can imagine, so some other stuff might trigger it as well. But overall we're just trying to reduce harshness, particularly around sibilance here. And the beauty is you can definitely tighten your curve and make it more focused on a specific band if you need to, you know, just by listening to it, by looking at it, etc. So if I solo this, let's just play a little section of this and see, you know, what we're affecting. And I'll also solo the vocal. And we can just see what we're affecting first. And then we'll, you know, put it in and see how it's actually, you know, helping the situation. Right there, a lot of sibilants, you can tell. So if I unsolo it, let's see it now in context. And I'll make the viewpoint a little bit easier to see. Focus on yourself, by yourself you isolate Time to have one on one Focus on yourself, by yourself you isolate Time to have Focus on yourself, by yourself you isolate Time to have A lot of S's in that section which makes it really easy to hear You can hear how it's just smoothing things over Basically doing exactly what you would expect a ds to do But a much more, you know, feasible way, much more controllable way and at the same time, you can obviously use it to do other things. In this case, uh, again, I'm using this first point here where I'm, you know, taming this low end problematic area and cleaning up some of the mud once again, but also doing it in conjunction with my, you know, high end stuff as well. So usually when I'm reaching for this, I'm not just reaching for it for no reason. As you can see, all five of these tips really revolved around a specific problem that I'm going in and addressing using this multiband compression. And I highly advise that when you reach for it, you do the same thing. You can of course go in and replace your standard compression, your downward compression with a multiband and specifically control specific bands and just completely replace that process altogether if you'd like. I don't always do that. I'm usually, again, reaching for it to address specific frequency problems that I want to fix in my mix. So hopefully this makes sense. But if you got value out of this video, I ask once again, if you can, please like, subscribe, and share. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you thought of the video and if you want to see something specific in the future. I hope this helped every single one of you, and I'm looking forward to helping you guys again soon. I'll catch you all later. Peace. Five.